Welcome back to Manish Recap. Today I will show you a horror thriller film from 2017 titled Downrange. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care a car is seen at the beginning where a few teenagers are traveling. They want to travel together. The car is now driving in a desolate area. Suddenly the back car tire is blown out. Now all teenagers get off with the optimism that any passing vehicle may help them. Alas, neither a vehicle passed nor any human being. There is nothing even at the distance where they can take support. One of the boys named Jeff among those teenagers think to tackle this state. He himself may change the tire. Jeff finds a bullet there while checking the tire nearer. Now, it was clear, though, this, that someone had intentionally punctured the tire of the car. But who is he? Why did he do so? It will be revealed watching the movie. Jeff is thinking to share it with his friends about it. Suddenly everyone hears the shouting of Jeff. One of the friends named Sarah moves to Jeff. She witnesses going to Jeff. That there is blood in surroundings, and Jeff is lying down. Sarah notices that Jeff has been shot on his head. So blood is coming out. She returns to her friends in worried condition. But before revealing anything to her friends, the gun is fired again. And now Sarah is shut down. Sarah falls on the grounds, witnessing their friends dying. Her friends begin to run to and fro, as being afraid as who is one shooting them down. Meanwhile, Todd's arm is targeted, but he hides himself behind the car in some way, rescuing himself. Now, these four friends are entrapped in this deserted area, and that gunman has been continuing the firing for one hour when there is silent after this constant one-hour firing. The Karen takes out her cell phone, so she may call 911 and someone may rescue them. But the firing is again started before she calls 911 or someone comes for their help. Now their cell phone is targeted and their final hope is also lost with the breakage of the cell phone as someone may approach to secure them. They neither call anyone and it is obvious the gunman will kill them if they get off the car. Jody observes that Sarah's cell phone is lying near a side. She turns on its camera while lifting it. So it may be noticed that. Who is he? Where is he? Who is targeting them? Jody makes the video of surroundings. After this, she watches. It is revealed through the video that a man is firing his gun on them at a distance of 2 kilometers. And he is not an ordinary shooter, but a threatening sharpshooter. Eric gets worried, seeing that sharpshooter in the video and he immediately begins to flee. That gunman again starts firing as he runs and he targets his both feet. Eric instantly falls down. His all friends proceed for his help. They notice a hound at a little distance, which start to eat the body of Eric heading towards him. Todd is upset witnessing such pathetic sight and he begins to run to that gunman. Todd had perhaps thought, as he will communicate with him. It may be possible that he remains safe, but the firing again starts before he reaches near him. And Todd is ended, is being targeted. Meantime, they notice a coming vehicle far away. There is a couple along with their little daughter in it. They are also crossing this deserted road. Suddenly that same gunman starts to fire on their vehicle. Due to this, their vehicle loses its balance and it crashes with the car of these teenagers. The wife in the car dies at the spot after crashing. The gunman begins firing again as the husband gets off the vehicle. Now the fuel is leaking from every side, their vehicle, and it catches fire because of the firing due to this fire. Husband's body has also begun to burn and he has also died in the same way. Now that little girl is a survived after them who is panicked, witnessing her parents' agonized, death being panicked. She begins to run at the same time that gunman starts to fire and he also puts the little girl into death. Now the surrounding are enveloped in the fire and smoke observing it. Karen hits upon an idea. Kim thinks that she will have to spread much smokescreen between gunman and herself. She may escape easily now in this way. Time begins to pass and the night falls. Karen and Jody take out all coverings of their car and they begin to fill them with fuel as they will have to set it fire. They wait for the smokescreen after setting it fire. Karen says to Jody as the smoke rises that let's run. Karen escapes, but Jody remains behind is being panicked. Karen starts to flee, leaving Jody behind. In spite of this smokescreen, that gunman kills Karen. Jody notices a vehicle before her. This vehicle belongs to a policeman. Seeing it, Jody begins to run towards that vehicle so she may stop it. But the firing is again started on it in front of her eyes. And the policeman has died seated in the vehicle before her. Observing all happenings, Jody is conflicted. Getting in police vehicle. She starts driving it towards that gunman. She crashes the car with that tree driving speedily from where the gunman is targeting them. 
That gunman falls on the vehicle as the car is crashed with the tree getting this chance. Jody picks up that gun and she starts firing on that gunman. And the astonishing fact is this, the gun through which Jody is firing on this gunman. That gun is full of bullets in this way. Gun is fired and it fires on her. So she also meets her end. This movie completes pathetically on this scene. In the end of this movie, neither the protagonist survived nor the antagonist. Thank you for watching.